part of learning to think like an artist means you learn to use color intelligently. Now, we could do a whole series of DVDs on nothing but color. So we're only going to hit the high points here, especially the, the points that tend to trip up new painters. First of all, make yourself familiar with the color wheel. If you don't have one, buy one. Better yet, make one. Make one a screensaver on your computer. Do whatever you do, need to do to get yourself familiar with primary colors, red, yellow, blue, secondary colors, orange, green, purple. You need to intuitively and quickly understand, well, what happens when I mix this color with that color? Which way is it going to push it around or across the color wheel? You really can't, I think, you can't afford to have to stop and think two or three times. And it can become second nature so quickly. Here's a few rules of thumb for learning to use color intelligently. The first rule of thumb for learning to use color is learn to see it. Just as many people don't see the shapes of things in the world around them, they don't really see the color either. Not all sky is blue. Not all grass is green. Not all shadows are gray. Everyone can see this green teal colored vase. Not everyone will see the teal colored shadow that that vase makes on the table. Everyone sees the, the, the brilliant sun hitting the front porch. Not everybody sees the reflection of the porch on the ceiling of the porch. The next law for using color is, when in doubt, leave it out. That is, use a limited palette, at least until you're comfortable laying down wild, high chroma colors. One of the most traditional, very limited palettes is this one that I've already laid out. Alizarin crimson, yellow ochre, and ultramarine blue. Now, when you use a palette like this, your painting is going to be decidedly more muted, but it will be controlled and it'll be look like all the colors have come from the same planet. Until you get comfortable laying one color down next to another one, use a limited palette. In fact, that's a great way to describe the painting process. Hmm, how does this color look laying next to that one? Third rule of thumb regarding color is by all means understand this concept of warm versus cool. Take your color wheel. Everything on the orange side of the color wheel is warm. Everything on the blue side of the color wheel is cool. This is really important because cool colors tend to recede away from the viewer and warm colors appear to come toward the viewer. When, I, when you want to give the illusion of space, very important principle to understand. And also, warm, cool colors is a really good way to break down a simplified palette. I have here a cool red and a warm red, a warm yellow and a cool yellow, a warm blue, a cool blue, and a warm brown and a cool brown. And I can make any color I want using that limited palette. And finally, rule of thumb number four, a little here, a little there. Artists often use the term a unified palette when they're referring to this principle. That is, if you've got some of one color somewhere in your painting, use it also somewhere else. It happens that in this painting, I think I've done that quite a bit. You notice there's a sort of a pink blush underneath this building. Same pink blush appears in this corner of the building. There's a lot of yellow gold here. There's likewise yellow gold here. Green here, green here, blue at the top, and blue at the bottom. A unified palette. Now you know, don't you, that all rules of thumb are meant to be broken, <laughs> but you need to know what they are and understand them before you can break them intelligently. Well, that's all I have to say about color for now. Now, the fourth element in learning to think like an artist is going to be creating interesting textures. You can probably guess by my lesson number one, learning how to move. Moving creates mature marks. Moving creates interesting textures. Yes, you can guess from that that I think that interesting textures is one of the most important aspects of creating a beautiful painting or drawing. And I just have one overarching rule that I want to give you regarding the use of texture, and that is the concept of balance. There are two kinds of texture that you will typically have in any painting. There's busy, energetic, energetic texture and calm texture. I think intuitively you probably understand what those mean. But unlike the scale that I have drawn, you should rarely have a, a painting that is 
that's half busy and half calm. No, I think it's oversimplifying it, but it's a good rule of thumb to keep in mind that every painting should be either essentially a busy painting with a few calm areas or the other way around. It should be essentially a calm painting with a few busy areas. I have one of my uh, abstract paintings right here. And just as an example, when I'm doing abstract paintings, one of my chief concerns is maintaining that ratio. Some calm, some busy. Now, let's look at this example from a historical art. The first is a painting by Albert Bierstadt, 19th century landscape painter. This is a painting of Yosemite National Park, slightly exaggerated, as you can tell. But would you call this a busy painting or a calm one? It's hard to say at first, but I think I'd call it mostly calm with busy areas because the atmospheric perspective has smudged or smoothed out those distant mountains and clouds. <laughs>